Now the solar part is the same basic, you know, same basic uh, frame. Looking at it from the end, we have the two pontoons, maybe, and then we have a platform and the draft tube and the auger at this point and the shaft. And then up here is a motor of some sort. Now the, these are all direct current motors. They call them DC motors. They're just like battery powered motors. Um, one of the natures of, nature of electricity with these, with these slower speed things is, is to, to achieve a very slow speed revolution at the, um, at, the, at the torque we need. They generally have to be like the electric, uh, probably the best example is like this, the spinning uh, ceiling fans you see. If you notice the motors on them, they're like pancakes. They're, they're narrow. And, but they're, they have a big circumference, and that's just the nature of the way the, the armature and the, and the uh, field is wound in that motor. They have to be big. To do something like this, I just did, I just did some checking. Uh, I looked at some uh, private designs that they had uh, uh, contracted electric motor manufacturers to build for them. The one I came up with I landed on was a, uh, bigger. It was a three-foot three draft tube instead of a one-foot. But the motor was, um, was uh, 146 pounds, I think, or 176 pounds. It was that big. It was, not, it was a, a custom-made motor, and I'm sure it was very expensive. Um, what I landed on for... I think it would be a sweet spot in between a larger draft tube without a larger auger. Yeah, you and I, you know, I didn't... It really optimize the laminar flows. Yeah, exactly. I didn't spend like hours and hours and hours looking for the ideal motor. What I... What I did do, though, was land on something. We have a totally different project uh, work, I'm working on at, at that fabrication shop. And in the course of all this stuff and thinking of some of the electric vehicles we could be using here on the farm to displace our diesel fuel and our gasoline, I have just come up with a really inexpensive, very sturdy little um, bicycle hub motor. They're, only, they're 25 pounds, so it's a good stout motor. They're not... They're not Chintzy, they were well made. Permanent magnet motor, um, about that, the size of a bicycle hub. I mean, well, a normal bicycle hub is like that big. Now this, this is a piece of equipment that's made to replace your back wheel or your front wheel, but most, most times they're in the back. Um, and then you hook a battery and a controller and a throttle onto that, and you can convert your mountain bike into an electric bike. And some people take the pedals off completely and put more batteries and just run them totally electric. Some people keep the cranks on there so they can do a, when I need a, when I see a big hill or whatever, I, or on a commuter bike, whatever, I just, I can, you know, help turn the throttle and, uh, and, and I'll help and it'll help. And, but anyway, these things are, they come in wattages of two, uh, 250, uh, 500, 750, 1000, um, and, Voltages anywhere from 24 to 48 volts, so it's just about perfect for a, for a, somewhere between $109 and 360 bucks. We can get not only the motor, but we get the controller and the speed control and the brake disc. I mean, we don't really need the brake disc, but all this stuff comes in the package. And these things have quite a bit of torque, uh, 22 newton meters of somewhere five six pounds six six foot pounds of torque or, and greater, which is more than you, you know, even a human creating it, it's, it's, it's difficult to come that good. So um, at that price, and, and they're made to be out in the weather, I mean, this is just perfect. So for a solar application, we have um, several um, 36 volt industrial panels that we ha we're using for uh, a future building project. They're, you know, they're bigger than, a little bigger than normal, but they're 36 volts and they put out up to 48, depending on the sun intensity. And the motors are designed to work anywhere from 24 to 48, so it's just a perfect match. Um, it will have the power to turn that, that flight auger. Um, it's a clean installation, and those panels are so big, they're about the size of, of that screen. This is th 39 inches by 79, 78. So, we probably don't have to worry about aiming like in the original pictures. To go back to that second slide, maybe we can just keep on rocking back. So this guy, this notice if you notice these are on these are on a, uh, a tripod or angle so that it's aiming. You know, it's in the morning when the sun comes up, it's aimed directly, and then at noon it's getting both of them, and then in the afternoon it's hitting on the second one. 
Uh, so over the course of the day, it's getting all the power it needs. Um, I, think, I think that's a 240-watt system on, on that design. I, I could be wrong, but we have 310-watt panel, so that's enough to drive, plenty to drive the 250-watt bicycle motor. And I think, and, and because those panels are big enough and, and, uh, and have enough uh, amperage, we can just lay it flat on the top of the surface of our frame and the sun, you know, ideally it's going to be from, you know, about 11 o'clock to 1 or 1.30 is going to get, you know, total power, but it's still going to be working a little bit at, at 9.30 and it's still going to be working a little bit at, uh, at 4.30 and 5. So we've got a good window um, and I will have to research batteries and we'll probably try to shove a little battery system in there, uh, protected from the water to some extent, and um, that'll carry it through the nighttime. So uh, it looks like it'll work out pretty well. I mean, there's no, uh, with, that, with that particular motor, there's no, uh, there may be some, you know, some hidden. What do you think the efficiency is between getting that motor to pump air and running a half horsepower compressor? Because those small, the fine bubble aeration is just so efficient. So one of those, a half horsepower basically is equal to 12.5 million gallons a day. Right, and I say 12.5 million gallons a day, that's a lot of water. Okay, a horsepower is equivalent to 746 watts, so we're looking at a half of that. So 310 wouldn't be, there's two reasons why it probably wouldn't be, even though with an efficient compressor, right. we're probably looking at two of those particular panels. Now you can, you can jury rig, you know, 500 watt, five 100 watt panels or 375 watt panels or whatever, but we just happen to have a bunch of these uh, 310 watt panels. I would probably be comfortable with two of those because what happens is a startup, uh, it takes, as in electric motors, it takes a lot more effort just to kick it to get started, but once it's going and rotating, it's, it's sort of And I think out. because of the nature of it, you want to use your first jolt of solar panel to top off the batteries for night operation, yeah. and then you top up with the, through the control panel, and then you go into direct drive. Right. Or, yeah. yeah. And we can work all that out, but I, but I do think that in that case, we probably use two. Now, the two panels may still be flat, you know, or we could tilt them up like, like that. And then we'd have to work out some kind of a aiming or tethering system so it doesn't, you know, aim the wrong way. We want it to aim north-south. You know? it's, it's kind of unfortunate in my mind that this pond really probably doesn't have the wind for the Sigonius rotor because that's just wind auger direct yeah, awesome. and then it, it's so elegant but if you don't have the wind and it's not going to turn it's not going to work and then i think in, in hierarchical order i think the next best idea for this is the bicycle pump yeah. because it requires less energy than the compressor and then third double your solar pumps but you need then you need a little bit more controls and everything like that and you do the compressed air yeah yeah and that's you know Ideally, just from a cost standpoint and from a fabrication standpoint, I, th I think most people would be, even though they don't realize it, a little bit of video, to, you know, YouTube watching and a little bit of, you know, looking at diagrams, they probably could build, without a whole lot of difficulty, build the Savonius model and, you know, with, from the hardware store. I mean, just basically piece things together. I just remember as a kid at New Alchemy watching people cutting 55-gallon drums in half and putting them on two bearings, and that was it. And yeah, yeah. They were everywhere, turning, pumping water. And, and this is, that's the elegant solution. I mean, we, you know, if we can do it, we can try. And we can even do one like that, just see it. We stick it out there and see if it does anything, you know. Mm -hmm. Not that the investment is not that, you know, not that... No, it is, and that's the good thing about it. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, you know, essentially, that's it. I mean, I fig uh, you know, figuring wattage out and all that. I mean, it's all, it's all basically in the data sheet. So you can look, if you've, only, if you've got 310 watts available, you have to choose a motor that has something less than that. Unfortunately, with the nature of electric motors, it can't be, it can't be a 310 watt panel is gonna drive a 305 watt motor. I mean, you have to give it some 80% of leeway generally. Uh, so we're looking at you know, a 250 and 310 on the solar would be, you know, would be fine. Uh, I, I hope. <laughs> Are there any engineers in the group that might want to comment on this? <laughs> yeah, I've got an idea. It's completely separate. Um, you guys ever heard of a hydraulic ram pump? Yeah. 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 So you've got some gravity here with your stream. What if you captured water up high, ran it to your hydraulic ram pump, you take that pump and in turn creates pressurized water and you just use a turbine to turn your auger. You run a hose right out to wherever your pump station is at. And then have some sort of, I don't know, turbine type device where the pressurized water comes in. I mean, you're not talking. 
There's some serious amount of torque there because you, you're going slow. Yeah. The thing is with the with the ram pumps, they don't generally produce a lot of pressure. They produce mm -hmm. they they do they a lot of flow. One tenth of the volume. That's true. That is true. But we could we could pump it into a into a tank and let it grab uh, a uh, gravity uh, tank and let it feed. I don't know what it's like during dry times, but if it, See, if, if you use the energy too. if yeah. you use the energy of this stream, which is you know right now it's several million gallons a day, right? And right. could I keto that into some sort of circulation, whether through a ramp pump or some other method? But dry time circulation might no, be the, right. was, maybe the issue on that one. Yeah. I was originally thinking of using an undershot water wheel, basically a big paddle system in the flowing creek, and then possibly doing not not even not a micro turbine. Yeah. Well, not even. Yeah, I was thinking more of aeration, not yeah, okay. not a turbine, not a water moving, but a, a bubbler. But I didn't know if that's you know at that point you know didn't know what we wanted. Just the question? Water engineer Tom. Tom. Tom, you have something to say? Yeah, we were just saying about is there an engineer? Oh yeah, we have we have an engineer walking. back. He missed it, but he could yeah. respond. I'm always saying no to engineers. <laughs> A civil engineer. Okay. Um, and and the other thing with with um, if you work with this stuff on a regular basis, you realize that every step you take of going through a conversion. Okay, we're going to take water and we're going to turn it through a mechanical thing and then we're going to pressurize it, then we're going to pump it up and then we're going to drop it down. Every little step you take, you're losing a little bit. And it's not like a, there's no one thing that kills the idea. It's just step by step by step, uh, it removes energy. So, you know, we try to do things in the simplest way possible with as least the number of steps possible. So that's, you know, basically the rule of thumb. That's why we're getting back to why the Sigonius rotor to the. Yeah. To the auger would be the optimal, but it might not be possible. Yeah, and we'll see. Yeah, it would work for part of the season. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, probably the stillest. The exactly. So the stillest time when it's needed the most, it would be yeah. not working. So maybe Sigonius rotor with a backup bike motor. Yeah. Well, that's you know that's another that's another thought. I mean, we you know we we're, we can play with the Prius of. Yeah, yeah, right. The hybrid, <laughs> the hybrid circulator, and and also we've got at the other side we've got uh, two ponds which are much. More, have much more exposure that we could be doing testing in too and see what's going on and, and then we could move them and that's you know that's not a because we also have the fabrication shop right there so it'd make it a lot easier before we actually take the effort to move it here so i i don't think there's any is there any other particular questions or um ideas you might have because you know i'm pretty much you know that's it for my part uh no well okay that's good i don't, I don't know how many there's other technologies out there. There's something called a Mazai injector where, you know, it draws air down and it sort of circulates, but then you have, you're getting into, you have to power a water pump again and everything like that. And yeah. we, you, you can do directional flows. And then there's another person who's worked for a living web who's got an airlift thing, but revered that's basically designed for wastewater and it just gets incredible circulation. And there's, those are things that are worth looking at, yeah. which is airlift to circulate water at its own level, which is a very efficient means you inject air into a tube and it draws upward, you know, it creates a bubble, which creates a vacuum, which turns everything over. So airlift can be very efficient means of it. And then if you're going to be running a pump, you can move a lot of water at its own level and inject oxygen through it, use these Mazai Venturi and vector injectors. But um, I think right now, because we can fabricate, and this is really trying to do this, do it yourself and replicable and duplicable. And so I think, I think that the technologies we've hit on are what we're really going to try and develop and send out. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, this has been actually a phenomenal experience from when we started uh, assembling the materials. Well, the conversations we had on the phone and in our emails, it was getting pretty inspirational. But it, it's, it's, it still seemed very, you know, I was skeptical we could pull something like this <laughs> off. And uh, we sort of d defined the parameters of what we wanted to do, and we got the materials together. And it's been just a real privilege to work with these guys in this group later on today. And I think we really did something significant. I think that the next phase will be to work out the circulation. But I think that we're that just getting that silly little island in there floating with kapok and native plants and no plastics in it whatsoever. And we did it. It wasn't super expensive. The most thing we spent money on, other than the consultant that they had to be flown in, but that's another matter, is um, 
<laughs> but it, it is a cedar, and the next time we're not going to use dimensional lumber. We're going to use cedar that's dying, standing in place, and we're going to make bigger, big, bigger, more. And but we, what we did is we prototyped something that wasn't designed. We didn't know if it was going to work, and it worked. And we've put some new life and a new ecology in that pond, and I, I couldn't be happier. And it was a privilege to be a part of it.